Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Hello, Toastmasters, and most welcome guests. My speech title is Virtual Reality, How It Will Change the World. Now, before I begin, this is a bit of a change of topic from accents, but I wanted to talk about something that's kind of related. It's virtual reality, and you think, but first of all, who here has tried virtual reality? One person? Where did you try it? It made the, uh, like a ride game type thing. Uh, and I'm trying to remember where I was when this happened. Yes, OK. So, so we did put it was, we put something on, on, and it was some kind of weird game. And, it was, yeah, it yeah. happened. OK, great. Well, we have the audience here. Basically, people don't, haven't tried it before. So I would like to explain to you my experience when I tried it a month ago. And I went to a demonstration of virtual reality at Emily Carr in Granville Island. And this was a really interesting evening where they had some of the latest technologies there. And I got to try on this headset thing that fits over top of your eyes. And you just wear this thing, it covers up your eyes. And it looks really funny if you look see someone wearing it because you don't see their face or their eyes. You just see this thing on, on, on them and then you're moving their head around and you don't know what they're doing, right? And what it is is inside the headset, there's a, a screen and then some lenses that fool your eyes into thinking that you're looking out at a landscape or in, in, a, in a room. So when you move your head around, it tracks your head movements. So it knows that you're looking this way, so then the picture that you're seeing is going to be shifting um, so that it fools your brain into thinking that you're actually looking around a room. So this is something that's totally wild and new. And see, most people here haven't tried it before. But I got to try this thing on for what, 10 minutes. And, and, and what it was, it was a, uh, a Chinese nightclub that I was transported into. So the, the guy who runs this company, he uh, He's from China, and he films virtual reality films for the Chinese version of YouTube. So he, he set up this virtual this, uh, 3D camera that takes a 360-degree view of wherever the camera is, and it films in 3D. And then you put this thing on, and then you're sitting in a chair somewhere like that, and you're wearing this funny thing on your head, but it seems like to you that you're in somewhere else. For me, it was really a totally wild experience and totally out of this world. And the reason I wanted to talk to you about it today is because next year, this technology that I tried on is going to be available to buy for anyone for around $200. So it's pretty affordable for someone who wants to try, give it a try. Or you may know somebody who, who gets one. Maybe some young people are using them for computer games. That, I think computer games are going to be the the first application of it that will be really popular. Instead of seeing like a window on a computer screen, you'll actually be able to put yourself inside the game. So we won't have Microsoft Windows anymore. We'll have like Microsoft Reality or something like that. Microsoft has a, a virtual reality headset called the HoloLens, which looks like some really funky sunglasses, but it, it's the same thing as the, the one I tried. It's called Oculus Rift. So I want to talk a bit more about some benefits of this technology and a few of the downsides as well. So one really big benefit is really interesting is um, there's a TED speaker named Chris Milk who released a TED talk about a few weeks ago and he is a filmmaker. And so he took a virtual reality camera that shoots in 360 degrees in 3D and he brought it to Syria, a Syrian refugee camp. And he made a 10 minute film about this girl who lives in the refugee camp and her life day to day. What's it like for her and her family living in the refugee camp? And it was this video, he showed it to the United Nations, the people who make the decisions about world policies and effects and things like that. So his argument is that th this new technology has the power to, to change minds because it can take you from wherever you are, say you're the most privileged, wealthiest person in the world who's used to Rolex watches and, and caviar, and you can put this headset on and you can go anywhere in the world and be right next to someone in a refugee camp who you normally would never have the opportunity to meet. 
So that's one really interesting benefit. And another one is for training and education. If you wanted to practice your Toastmasters speech, you could put this headset on and then you'd have an audience of 10 people or you can program it, adjust the number, and now you've got 1,000 people in the room. And you could just practice giving the speech right there in, those, in that environment. And when you come to Toastmasters, you might feel a bit more comfortable because you've had all these many hours of practice in this virtual environment. I don't think virtual will replace the real, but it will be a, a way to supplement or even increase the effectiveness of your training that you're doing. But before I go, I want to mention a few of the drawbacks of the technology, because every technology has some good things and some bad things. The bad part of technology, this virtual reality, is I think a lot of people will get lost and stuck in the virtual world and forget about the real world. They may forget that they have a body because they always have a virtual body. They may forget that they have a health or that they have friends or people around them that they want to see. They might start ignoring their family or their friends or spending all their time in the virtual world and further getting to eat or drink and things like this. This is already something that's common for people who really love computer games, but it may become even more problematic. And another thing to watch out for is that when you have this headset on, all the data about what you're doing, what you're looking at, is being sent to a company somewhere. So they know what you're doing and they can collect data on you, what you're doing. They even have the opportunity to maybe inject an advertisement into your view, viewpoint. So suddenly you see this ad for something going across your screen, across your vision. They have the power to possibly control us or influence us in even more invasive ways. So that's something that's scary to think about. So I think this technology will be coming and will become more popular in the next year, in the next five or 10 years, it may become really popular. And so we need to really focus on making sure that the benefits, we, get, we make use of the benefits and then try to limit some of these problematic effects of it. But I, I wanted to say that this is really interesting. If you ever have a chance to try virtual reality, make sure you give it a try for five minutes and see what the future will hold. Thank you.